。大家啱啱有冇去到我哋隔篱嘅呢一个十六米阔嘅互动艺术幕墙嗰度，欣赏到山下精子嘅作品咧？佢咧係一個非常之出名嘅日本藝術家啦，佢本身亦都係一個舞蹈家嚟嘅。咁啊，山下精子咧就透過科技去變成一位數碼藝術家，最近咧仲去咗美國又發展過添。嚟緊咧，我哋非常之榮幸邀請到佢，越洋同我哋分享一下藝術科技點樣提升佢嘅日常生活。我哋仲請到咧十分之支持女性創業嘅風險投資公司 Anima Ventures 嘅創辦人 Bohemia Lee 上嚟同佢嚟一個隔空嘅對談嘅。好，仲後面仲有少少位啊，大家可以坐低。咁我哋邀請埋 Bohemia 上台先。我哋而家有請 Bohemia 同埋 Akiko。Hi， hi there Akiko， all good。Excellent, Hi. excellent. Hello, By the way, everyone. I just um I just went to see your your uh, immersive Hana Fubuki. It's very popular at the moment. Amazing! Thank yep. you so yep. much. <laughs> okay, so, um, ladies and gentlemen, you have now entered another dimension, because <laughs> for the next hour, you will only be hearing and seeing women. So enjoy. <laughs> um. When we were first introduced to each other, Akiko, I was fascinated by the fact that you transitioned from performance art, being a dancer, to audiovisual and digital art. Could you tell us a bit more about this journey and the aspirations you came across on this journey? Yes, yeah. So I started from, you know, I was dancing for a very long time. I started around when I was 10 years old. And then, you know, the type of dance I was doing was like a jazz dance, hip hop dance, um, you know, street dance, and I really liked it. And when I was, you know, like after college, and then I was still trying to, you know, make my career like living out of dancing, which was quite difficult, as you can imagine. Yeah. And then that was around time I come across. What is called projection mapping, you know, which is you use projector and then project onto maybe buildings and make building look like moving and you know so on. And I really liked it and I really wanted to. Well, first of all, I wanted to see it in my eye, but there was not so much projection mapping available, you know, that you don't see it every day, right? So that was the kind of the beginning when. I really, you know, kind of find my sort of desire to like participate, you know, in doing projection mapping. So, long story short, I kind of gathered, you know, like-minded people、uh, in Los Angeles. That was also when I, you know, moved moved from Tokyo in Japan to Los Angeles, and I was kind of new to, you know, the city. So I also like, you know, wanted to kind of meet people as well. So that was a really great way that I got to, you know. I'll、also meet really amazing people in LA, and then we started doing kind of doing projection mapping just for fun, you know, as a hobby together. And then we did so many different events, you know, like just doing projection mapping at the, the all sorts of places. And that kind of led me to, you know, actually work on more professional、um, like opportunities, like doing initially was projection mapping, but eventually、uh, that became, you know. Uh, if you kind of do what I do, which is like kind of 3D animation and kind of understanding, you know, how to create something in space for experience, and that kind of led me to, you know, open up for so many different opportunities, like like Hanafubuki at Jump Starter, which is a really interesting、um, thing, which I almost like being able to combine, you know, like. Um, I make people to kind of dance, you know, in front of the the digital flowers, and then kind of being able to combine my 3D animation, but it's also real time, you know. So it's like a kind of audience is, you know, kind of helping my artwork to like really bloom and move around. So that is kind of a crazy journey that you know, like now I am a digital artist some somehow. <laughs> Yeah,、um, for sure. I went in the room and I saw lots of kids jumping around. So they're for sure <laughs> interacting with Hana Fubuki, probably in the way that you want them to.、Um, mm -hmm. So thank you for sharing with us、um, your journey into、um, audiovisual and digital arts. So creativity for many of us who do not practice art or design on a daily basis 
probably comes across as rather conceptual. So many outside the art world probably only reserve creativity to when they physically look at art or when they try and make something with their hands. So for you, as a full-time artist, how do you actually see creativity? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. Um, yeah, I think you know I agree with you when you, when people kind of talk about oh you are creative you know that's like kind of uh, you know cre creative people as profession which could be you know designers animators you know painters like that's what kind of the world kind of makes us think but I think the creativity as a word fundamentally it's more broad you know term like that I think every human, like every one of us, whether or not you think you are creative or not, I think everyone is creative. Um, that's something I think, you know, as a human, we have this special ability to, uh, well, we dream, <laughs> everybody dream, and we, we are able to imagine something that in our brain, I think you know that is creativity. Um, not all of the you know animal do that, and um, you know I am a full time artist now. But again, like I was not. I never thought I I will become an artist when I was young. I thought it'll be cool, but I thought I I don't know if I can be. You know, I was not from art school, so you know I'm not necessarily traditionally trained artist. Um, and I think, you know, when you, like in my sense, the creativity is um, like creating something out of nothing. Well, sometimes you know, it might take some material, it might take, you know, it, it might be like combining like two different things together, which is a very like a good secret that we do, uh, that you can utilize it. A lot of creative people have a lot of tricks, but I think, you know, it is like really, about the imagination um, to solve some sort of, it could be a problem that we, you know, you want to solve daily life and you just use, aha, you know, like you might um, like just put something that you never thought of and then, you know, solve a problem or make things beautiful. And then, yeah, I think that's something that everybody is actually already doing. Yeah, thank you. Um, you actually just answered my next question as well, because I was going to ask you, how do you actually think creatively in daily life? And, you know, how can you utilize and harness this creativity? But very much so, you answered that question. Um, yeah, but, you know, I want to say, like, maybe, like, a little bit more yes, like please go practical, ahead. like, examples. Like, I, you know, I think, well, besides making like art, like kind of booky. Um, I think, you know, people like, um, when they are, when people are taking pictures, like even with my artworks, which, you know, it's amazing because uh, I'm not over there. So, you know, I'm really enjoying seeing people taking pictures in the space. And, you know, I think people are so creative. Like I, I didn't even imagine that, um, you know, some people posted a picture of, the reflection you know of the the floor and then like almost like you know make it even upside down or like rotate it and like really finding that you know almost new angle yourself and then it's something like you know like you don't think about it but when we are taking picture of your friend for example you think about how to frame it and you know that is I think you are like a, like a movie director you are creating you know um again your experience you are sort of cropping this world from your point of view. And I think that itself is a creativity. Um, and other example can be, um, I love cooking and, you know, I don't know, not, not everybody loves cooking, but, you know, people who love cooking, I think can almost agree that um, cooking, you know, like you have to kind of imagine, like if you are not following the recipe, you know, like, like, from the beginning to the end, like we always kind of think about, oh, I have this other ingredient. So I, we have this spice and then, you know, you try out something new and you know, it might come out great or not, <laughs> but I think that is creativity. And uh, for also lastly, I think I'm not so good at it, but like telling jokes, I think that takes a lot of creativity. And I think, you know, that's something we all do. 
Yeah, that's very true, especially with cooking. I particularly like Asian cooking because it's not very precise and you can just throw a couple of extra bits and ingredients yeah, in it. That's so true. Thank you for those daily examples. So since we are in a women's entrepreneurship session, there's no escaping that we will be talking about women or more importantly, the lack of women in, in the art space. So many of you might be surprised to hear these statistics that I have on my hands because we might be accustomed to think that women actually thrive in the art world. But look around you, even in Hong Kong, as per the Women's Foundation data from 2019, female artists shown in commercial galleries here make up only 6%. So globally speaking, there are actually no women at the top of the 0.03% of the art market, where more than 40% of the profit is generated. So overall, um, you might not be surprised to hear, 95% of artworks sold at auction are by male artists. So it's not just a matter of female artists, right, on one side. We also have to think about the gender balance in the entire ecosystem, especially the decision makers, which are, you know, gallery directors and museum curators. So Akiko, what are your views on the representation of women in your world? Well, first of all, the statistics, the statistics is really shocking, to be honest. Um, but it's, it's, it's strange, but because, you know, you are a woman, you know, I am here. And I just, I think we just see so many women nowadays, uh, uh, as far as I know. But I guess, you know, like the statistics is showing is, I guess, more power or like a sort of more you know people who's established and people in power I think more people you know are still men and yeah I think I think we need sort of yeah again like you know I don't know if this is something just like grassroots like you can change from the bottom but I kind of agree I think we need more women Kind of helping from all the other places, which is you know like more curators, like you said, um, more buyers. You know, I think if if the dominant buyer is men, maybe it may might make sense that more dominant um, sold artwork is made by men. So um, I think in general, yeah, it might be something that takes time. I think we are seeing the change, and I think it's really good that. Um, you know, like we, we are talking about it as we do and, you know, making it easier, easier, you know, easier and easier for the other, um, other women in other countries to also get in. And I think I really wanted to mention that, you know, um, maybe in Japan or in Hong Kong or, you know, where I live in the U.S., I think it, the awareness of, you know, women's power, or like, you know, women's equality is I think more, they are more aware. I think it's more, you know, common to talk about now, but I think not, you know, not all of the countries, like maybe more sort of still conservative country might, you know, struggle. And then probably for those women, especially there, uh, if I were born in there, I think maybe I had a different life. And if I think about it, maybe, you know, I wonder if there's something that we can help from the in other country as well. I think maybe that's also something to think about. Yeah, yeah, Th those are really good points. And how do you think we can rebalance this gap in the digital or metaverse space? Because, you know, these are new frontiers. Yeah, um, I think I think the fact that, like, you know, it's digital, um, it make I think it's a good thing. Uh, I think, it, you know, I actually see it optimistic about that because actually you know a lot of women um is like it's a well, it depends some people don't like it but like I think I think a lot of you know also other women is really good at technology and we are seeing that you know we we like I know a lot of engineers like architect um I mean not just that but like you know like people the digital artists there's so many uh, amazing women digital artists so I think like one thing that's really interesting with this metaverse is that it'll be, you know, it will be more accessible to like people 
um, you know, just, just by having the, I guess, computer and the internet. And some, maybe, you know, in the near future, you might only need your phone, which, you know, most of us have, have it now. So I think the, the entry, you know, the hurdle for the entry is like getting lower and lower. So, yeah, like I said, you know, in the earlier question, um, as long as the community is strong and, you know, the world is like really open to, you know, um, the equality, and not just women, I think, in you know, we have any sort of like gender, but not just as LGBTQ, you know, I think as long as the world is, you know, headed to, I think, where it's headed right now, um, I think, you know, it definitely takes time to change something that uh, that it's stuck like from the sort of old thinking. But I think you know we we are like right in, in this place to kind of the, actually it's kind of our responsibility to make our next generation you know uh, to a higher place like the higher frequency um, because what's what's like what's holding us from you know. Um, like making our whole, like this as a humanity, you know, I think we have to also think about um, metaverse. Like we, we have to think of what's the better for us, you know, not just the money, but what, why, like, why are we creating? Um, the whole point is to, you know, make our life like more beautiful and like enjoyable. So I think it is a really, we are at the tricky really point where we can go, like many different ways. Yeah, I totally agree with that point there because whenever I hear blockchain projects, um, metaverse projects, and they're like, yes, we're building on the blockchain. And I'm like, and why on the blockchain? <laughs> yeah. That's always, that's always yeah. the first thing I ask. Right, um, my last question to you is, what advice would you give to young people, especially women who would like to get into your industry? Yeah, so, um, I think, you know, when, when you are starting out, I think, like, I, I was, you know, like, everybody, everybody is very nervous about uh, starting something new, I think. And, you know, it, but you have to take that first step to actually get anywhere. So, you know, I get asked these, like, similar questions from, you know, for example, college students who is learning something else, but, you know, they might, they thought, like, oh, like, Akiko, what you are doing is really cool, and I want to do something like you do, but I don't know where to start. And I think, you know, I didn't start from what, uh, like, Hana Fubuki, you know, it was, it's like, I started from just having like a little projector and then just, you know, just uh, figure out how to do something with it with my friend, right? So, and, you know, beauty of it is like the whole journey and process is like so beautiful. And actually, you know, that was like almost the best time that you can never forget. Um, but my point is, you know, if you, if you, like I found my like projection mapping passion through just the YouTube video, like I watched a YouTube video and I thought oh, that's so cool. I want to do it. Um, so yeah, my uh, suggestion is, um, you know, in your daily life, just open your eye and you know, if you think something is nice or something is beautiful, you know, anything that somebody is doing something inspiring, um, take it seriously because I think there is something in you. It's already in you that, you know, telling you that, oh. Like you would do that well, you know, maybe, you know, I think the fact that you get inspired, that there's something that to do with you. So, um, yeah, take the first step. It could be, it could be very small. Uh, it could be just talk to your friend that you thought it's cool. Uh, it could be, you know, finding um, the first step really. Yeah. Yep. The small actions. Thank you so much for that advice. And I'm sure, you know, many young women out there will be inspired by many more of your, you know, future pieces of artworks and in any other interviews that you will, you will do. Um, and I agree, it's always about taking that first step because if there is not even that one step, <laughs> you're never <laughs> going to get started, right? So it will always yeah. be zero and zero times zero is just zero. So there we go. Thank you so much, Akiko, for your time. I know it's rather late or early in New York where you are now. Thank you again. Yeah.
Bye bye. Good morning. Bye. Thank you.